This is Mark, and welcome back to Candle Shore. You know, right before I record a show, I try to select, or I, I have a selection of topics that I want to cover. Sometimes it's events that happened the week before. Sometimes it's things I just want to get to in the show. But today, I decided to uh, watch a little news uh, just to catch up on things. And it occurred to me, which is why I entitled this episode Late Breaking, why is it when you watch the news, and I don't care if it's CBS, NBC, ABC, Fox, um, why is it late breaking is always bad? You ever notice that? Late breaking news is always bad news. It's, it's very disturbing to me. And I, you know, those of you who listen to the show regularly, or if you go back in the archives and look at what I've covered, you know I have very little, if any, respect for the news media. I've often called them, and I continue to think of them as ratings whores. And that means, for those of you who don't get it, that they'll say or do anything to get people to watch the watch their broadcast. I, I truly believe that. I guess there's no harm in that, except, in my opinion, when all you do is basically create an atmosphere of fear. Uh, every, every, you know, the big stories are always bad news, whether it's the flooding in Colorado, an earthquake, terrorist attack, lone gunman going crazy. It seems that they really, really like that. And, you know, and maybe I'm personifying just basically a business decision. There's a couple of things I want to cover, and I may, it may seem to you that I'm going back and forth between, but in my, in my mind, at least, these, these things I'm going to cover are linked together. And when you watch the news, uh, and you have a situation like at the time of this recording, I guess the biggest story would be, or on a national level, the biggest story is about the lone gunman who, um, I think shot th- 12 people at the Navy shipyard or something. I remember watching uh, the coverage after the gunman was already killed. And the lead on the news is, well, uh, this is still a, a scene in, 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 in progress. You know, we'll bring you to later. They made it sound as if there was th- things still going. The guy is dead. Right. Uh, and they just like to keep it in the present. Uh, they, they, you know, they, they, they get 12 people to cover the same story. And then, and then they, they sit and ask, uh, a relative. They find any relative. They find the relative of the person and say, what does this feel like? I have, you know, I know I've said this before, and I am going to cover some new territory here, but I, I just don't understand that mentality. It it definitely is a tragedy. Of course it's a tragedy uh, it, it, for the people who got killed and for their families. Uh, but, you know, to turn it into something, you know, if you, if you believe what you see on television, you really should be afraid to go out the door because everybody potentially could pull out a pistol uh, and start shooting. Or, no, excuse me. Assault wife or assault or assault rifle. For most of us, these things will never happen. Just like winning the lottery for most of us will never happen. But people do win. This may sound a little odd, but but try to follow me. You know, I I'm thinking about. I remember in the well in the late sixties and the seventies, people were really afraid of the Russians in terms of the bomb. And I suppose it was in the 50s, too. You know, talk about this Cold War. Who was going to push the button? And I think back in those days, people, as a, and I'm talking about specifically people here, in the West, uh, it was a lack of information. We didn't know what was going on behind the Iron Curtain. I think that's what they called it. Uh, I assume they didn't know. That is to say, we didn't know what they didn't know what we didn't know what they didn't know. And so... You know, the unknown, uh, of course, it's very frightening. That's human nature. That's the way we protect ourselves. I understand that. It's instinct. And now it seems to me we've come, we're on the other side of it now. And the other side being now too much information can be a dangerous thing. If all, if you're constantly flooded with bad news, you're constantly flooded with this barrage of the bad that people can do. And I maintain that people have always done these things. It's just that we didn't have the technology to make the information so readily available. That's the difference that I think. I mean, it's true. 
200 years ago, we didn't have AK-47s. Okay, I give you that. But if you'll cut me a little bit of slack here, I think you, you know where I'm going with this. And that is, you know, now we know everything. And the problem when you know everything or too much of one thing is that you start drawing, you can lose sight of the big picture. You know, I, listen, I, I fall prey to it also. Every time I see an airplane crash, I'm convinced I'm going to die on an airplane. I don't like to fly at best. But if you think about the number of flights that take off and land safely every day, it's a pretty small number, the ones that have accidents. Does that mean you shouldn't be afraid? It just means you should keep it in perspective. You know, I think the worst thing any of us can do is to be afraid. To afraid to go out the door, afraid of other people, afraid of asking for help, afraid of uh, trusting somebody. You know, it, it, that, that's a, a prison that you cannot escape from once you're in. You have got to work very hard to not let that happen. And I'll tell you, as I watch the news, I can see how I, I was at a restaurant the other day and there were a couple behind us. And I wasn't eavesdropping. Really, I wasn't. Because those of you who know me know I can't hear anything. But they were talking pretty loudly. And uh, they were talking about how uh, dangerous it is out there. How dangerous it is out there. Where's out there? Where is out there? Everybody talks about out there. Well, we're here. We are in the out there, ladies and gentlemen. And I, I as I listened, I didn't listen a long time. But it, again, they got a little animated. And I realized that these people were had worked themselves up to where they wouldn't help somebody if they didn't know them. I saw two stories in the no three stories or so in the last week, maybe the last five days, and the crimes that took place happened in affluent neighborhoods. And I remember when they do the interviews, you always get these people standing outside. It goes, "This stuff never happens in this neighborhood." Now, you may say, well, Mark, wait, on one minute you say, it, you know, statistically it's pretty low. Now you're giving us examples of where it happens where it doesn't usually happen. But it's the same thing if you stop and think about it. These people, one, assume it's going to happen somewhere else and that it can't happen to them, which always bothers me. Well, you know, we live in Bel Air and these kinds of things don't happen in Bel Air. Oh, please. No, what happens in Beverly Hills and Bel Air and, and uh, Brentwood, I'm just using these places, is that the police keep it down. There's things that go on in those places. Admittedly, maybe not as many, but when it happens, it, it's not as red. The news doesn't jump on it, you know? They have people who can suppress those things. Suppress such things, sorry. The, it's amazing when you have money what you can do. If you want to, if you're, if you have a lot of money, enough influence, certainly in California, and your kid does something, or your spouse does something, you can keep it out of the papers, or you can certainly minimize it if you have the right connections. So I'm not convinced that we hear about everything that goes on everywhere. We just hear about things where people can't afford to stop the information. Now, I know this seems like I'm kind of, you know, neandering here, but I'm, I'm drawing this, there's going to be a point. Okay, so one, I, I, you know, when you, and I've said this before, when you watch the news, you know, Please, you know, understand that it, the news media is not there to inform us. They are there to make money. That is their goal. It is a television show. It is a broadcast. It is, they are not coming on to say, wow, we really want to keep the citizens informed. I, trust me, maybe at some point in history that may have been true. I don't know. It's not the case now. So when you watch the news, understand you are watching a business product. And business products always have their, their, their own interest first. Okay? Let's just keep that in mind. This has to be a, a personal conviction. Just like religion is. I truly believe that people are basically good. I really do. This could be my last day on the planet. This could be the last time you ever hear from me. I may walk outside and be gunned down in a few minutes but I will have gone to my maker thinking that people are basically good. And if it were to happen to me, does not mean it's going to happen to you. So you have to keep that in mind. Refuse to be afraid of things. Nothing is worse than being afraid, which takes me to the next part of this. I remember being, when I was very young, um, let's say, I don't know, five or six, I, you know, I can't give you the details as to how this came up, but sometimes my mother would say, and my mother was a very mean person, 
to say, I think this was cruel, cruel to do to a child. Mean, mean spirited and evil. She would say, I won't be around much longer. You're going to be at the, be on your own. You better, you know, be nice to me or not be nice to me, but you better behave or sooner, sooner or later, I'm not going to be around. I don't know how you're going to eat then. then. She would say these horrible things. Say that to a five year old or a seven year old to say that to a child at all, I think is beyond belief. I think it's just wickedly evil. And what would happen, of course, is I would be, well, we, my, my brother and I, we'd be afraid. For her, it was just a way to get us to behave. To us, it spawned images of nightmares, uh, just nightmares. I remember laying awake thinking, well, who's going to pay the electricity? I don't think I thought in terms of electricity, but I think I thought in terms of uh, the lights or the food or my clothes or who's going to give me a bath. I'm still thinking about that part. Who's going to give me? But anyway, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Little Decker, sorry. She inspired a lot of fear. She wanted us to be afraid. And I, that's not a good thing. You don't want your children to grow up being afraid. You don't want to be afraid. I learned a lot about fear very early. It was the, almost, it was used as a weapon in my case. And I, I would hate that to be the case for anything. Getting back to the news about this late breaking thing and this is all tied into the same thing fear being afraid and why again when they say late breaking you never hear late breaking in terms of uh, a man just donated his car to the salvation army i don't know maybe it doesn't sound exciting maybe not and maybe late breaking can't you know maybe there's nothing imminently good happening on an instant i don't know I do know when they say we have late breaking news, you can damn sure bet it's going to be something bad happening to somebody, something guaranteed. If I'm wrong, please send me emails. Let me know. I'd love to be wrong, but I don't think so. But all right, getting back to my thing. So I'm watching the news today, and this is another thing I don't understand about the news media, about people. And maybe the, the news media is a reflection of the way people think. I don't know. It certainly doesn't reflect the way I think. A woman here in L.A. was killed last night at 9 o'clock by a, a, a robber. I guess she was working in some store by herself, a clerk. And they they kept saying over and over and over, mother of five, mother of five. She's a mother of five. They had the kids out on the, on the press release um, when they did a, is it a press release? You know when they, when they um, get the media together and do some kind of the police get together and pat each other on the back for all the good jobs they're doing and then plead with the public to find the person. They had all her kids there. You know, I was thinking what that must feel like to people who have recently suffered loss who didn't have five kids. The mother of five is bad, but is it any, they make it seem as though, well, you killed a mother. What if she'd only been a mother of three? What if it had been a father of five? Well, you know, I don't get it. They've seen it. Is there some hidden value system that I didn't get, uh, that I'm not privy to? I wouldn't care if she didn't have any kids. It doesn't matter. Now, I may be alone in this, but I, I'm, it, it, it bothers me to such an extent. It, it, what about, let's say somebody had gotten killed last night, or there are people being killed all the time, unfortunately. And let's say they didn't have kids. Does that make the life less valuable? Now, you could say, well, yeah, but if she's a mother of five, that doesn't necessarily mean she was a good mother of five, does it? In fact, I would argue that if you have more kids than you can afford, that doesn't make you a very good parent at all. I'm not making any value judgment on this particular woman. But just because someone has a child doesn't mean that, <laughs> I mean, you know, think, think of what I'm saying. They just assume so much. They assume so much because of a number. It's just a number. I'm sorry for the children's loss. Of course I am. But I would be sorry for the parents' loss of their daughter. Or even if she didn't have any family. It To me, it's a life is a life is a life is a life. And when the media, and I, I, I say the media, but clearly, you know, they're getting this from somebody. There seems to be a value judgment on when somebody is killed or loses their life. And this is the way I see it. Women are valued higher than men. 
young women are valued higher than young women. This is when, in terms of the murder quotient. Maybe I should entitle this thing the murder, the murder value. There seems to be a value. White people clearly outrank minorities when it comes to, uh, you know, and I said this before. You let a pretty blonde, blue-eyed white woman go missing, and this country will turn itself on its ear to find her. Let it be a, a fat Mexican lady or an older Asian woman, eh, not so much. Let it be a man that's missing, no one cares. You know, the, a couple of weeks ago, there was a young white guy um, that was missing, college student. And it got covered, but it didn't, you know, it, it, the, the, the lack of interest from the media that I saw in this, cause I kind of followed it. And I just remember thinking, I think the kid was about 19. Good, good kid. Looked like a nice kid from the picture. If it had been a 19 year old white girl missing, oh man. It would, it's interesting to see. I don't know if they, if the, the people at the news get around and say, let's put a value system. Maybe it's the amount of, I don't know how they do it. But I tell you right now, if you're an overweight, older minority, and not, no one really cares what happens to you as far as the news. It just won't get that much covered. The younger you are, if, and, and your gender, and of course the race that you are, and the way you look, pretty people, people care. Fat people, they don't. People with children apparently are high on the food chain, even though they may, they, they may abuse the kids. There are a lot of parents who are rotten parents. In fact, I would argue that in some cases, some that I'm aware of, personally aware of, the fact that if the parents were missing, it would be a better thing for the child. But nobody talks about that. The news doesn't care. You see, the news is a flat thing. It just gives you the, 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 the quick two-dimensional view. They don't give you the truth. They don't d dig into it and, and say, and again, I'm just get pouring this out of the air. A woman was killed. But, of course, she used to, you know, beat her children and starve them. Or she, you know, or, or the father was killed of kids. We don't know. They don't talk about it. We don't, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm just saying when you look at a picture, a, a proverbial picture, when you look at something on the news or on television, please use your brain. Don't just take their word for anything. When they say late breaking, I want you to just, you know, put a, put a little... Have an alarm go, red alert, or a yellow alert in your mind that says, ah, late breaking, here we go. That means they want your attention for ratings. You know, it always cracks me up uh, when you watch a news program uh, and they cover in a tragedy. You know, they're not trying to help the people in the tragedy, right? I mean, I, 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 it just cracks me up. Why don't you turn off the cameras and take all those, take those vehicles you've got and go rescue some people who are being flooded? Oh, no, you're too busy putting, uh, putting on your... Um, outdoor gear and having a, a, you know, overpaid anchors sit there and talk about the people who are just, their lives are ruined. Somehow that just doesn't seem right to me. I, I know that if it were me and I were the one that was suffering and some idiot came around me with a microphone, I'd shove it down his throat. Okay. If I'd lost some, some member of my family, uh, someone dear to me or my house just got blown up. Or I'm, you know, swimming back home because of a flood. And some SOB came over to me and said, what does it feel like? What are you going to do from here? How do you think you can cope? I'm telling you, I'd beat him over the head with his damn microphone. There you have it. Um, oh, I'll tell you something else I've done and I urge you to do. You know, if you're sick and tired of the news doing this, and if you use social media, send an email or something to, your, to the news media. Send it just to say, I'm sick of all the bad news. I did. Send it, you know, tweet it. Wherever, however you get your, get your message out. However, send some feedback to these people saying, you know, I mean, we, look, I'm not, obviously we need to be informed, but they sensationalize it. They really do. I'm hoping that there'll be a swing back towards some actual journalism and not just, uh, ratings broadcasting. That's what I call it. Ratings broadcasting. It's not about being a good journalist and getting all the facts. It's just about getting your attention so they can sell more products. And lastly, again, coming full circle with regards to fear, really work very hard not to be afraid. We do live in scary times. They talk about, especially here in the U.S., they talk about, uh, you know, the way the country was before 9-11 and the way it was after 9-11. And they say, well, people weren't really afraid of things before 9-11. I don't know who they were talking about. They certainly weren't talking about the people living in South Central or on the wrong side of Chicago or Baltimore.
or in certain parts of D.C. They certainly weren't talking. I don't know who they were talking about. Maybe they realized that, I guess that maybe they're saying that uh, rich people could be hurt as easily as poor people. I don't know. But 9-11 didn't do anything to change my opinion about anything. I've always known that there are bad people on the planet. Uh, the fact that, uh, you know, it happened in 9-11 brought, it, brought us into the, um, into the uh, terrorist theater, okay. But on the grand scheme of things, maybe anybody who's ever read a history book shouldn't feel too safe about anything with regards on a, on a national level, is what I'm saying. So I realize that some of the things I've said may sound a bit contradictory, but I'm assuming that the people who listen to the show have a brainstem and can understand the nuance of what I'm saying. It's so hard to put into words, and, and it's very hard to, to do a comprehensive job when I have limited time. So, you know, what do I want you to come away from this with, from this show? Don't be afraid. Be cautious. Be reasonable. But believe in people, because if everybody stops believing in people and everybody starts acting as though they, you know, their life is at, is at risk every minute of the day, that won't be any way to live. And by the way, and you've heard this before, that's when the bad guys really do win. To take away your peace of mind is, I think, the, the greatest theft anyone can, can take from you. People are good. People are basically good. You know, sometimes people see the world as a reflection of themselves. So if you know you got evil tendencies and you, you know, you got all these, um, dark thoughts, then of course you're going to think other people have dark thoughts, dark thoughts also. With more information comes more responsibility. Exercise it wisely, okay? And remember to make a joyful noise. And I'll see you back here soon. Take care. <laughs>